The Dodgers offense is stinking up the joint. UCLA lands a top 100 quarterback in the class of 2025, and linebackers are going to be doing a lot of sprints if they want to play for the Chargers. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. And yes, as you might imagine, it is a lovely Sunday, May 26, 2024. And to start that lovely Sunday, I am absolutely lovely and hung over. We are back in the Sanctum Sanctorum of LA Sports. Most of my equipment is busted up. I have no idea why. Sometimes life just flat out sucks. But by the time you will see this, I'll be on a plane heading east for work. And if you like being in the know about LA sports, click to clack the like button. Click to clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we drop new content. Sharing is caring. Let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. Especially about my Bobby Brady voice. Quite charming. The ladies love it. Now, before we go through the news and notes and look at the scoreboard, the Dodgers are now on a four-game losing streak. They lose again in Cincinnati yesterday, 3-1. to one. Totally don't care. These things happen during the course of the season. It's four games. They still lead the division by five and a half games over Suck Francisco. You can probably figure out what's going on with the team without me even having to tell you. We've been talking about it all season long. The lineup for the Dodgers is more top-heavy than Katy Perry. And after Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, and Freddie Freeman use up all the baby oil, there's nothing left for the rest of the lineup. You get through Betts, Otani, and Freeman. And by the way, we talked about this yesterday. Otani is going through a hamstring issue. You can beat that team. Meanwhile, Ricky Pooge scores the game winner as the LA Galaxy rally to a 2-1 victory over Houston. The Galaxy are unbeaten in five consecutive matches. Matus Bogus. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but it's very singable when you call it that. He scored the only goal of the match as LAFC edged Atlanta United 1-0. Hugo Loris records his third consecutive shutout. More people actually got thrown out of that match than scored 2-1. So, may not be a lot of goals, but on the plus side, there's going to be a lot of anger. So sign me up for that. Meanwhile, today, the Dodgers will finish their season, uh, season series at Cincinnati today at 9 in the morning. Yoshinobu Yamamoto is 5-1 with a 3.17 ERA. Brett Suter, no record, 4.13 ERA. Dallas is in town to play the Sparks at 6. And because the press seems to be more interested in how Cameron Brink is flaunting her abs instead of how she plays, I'll be honest with you. I'm losing interest in the WNBA all over again. But I do have a side note about the hype that this league has been getting. Could somebody please tell Bill Plaschke of the LA Times that in the last Sparks game, Caitlin Clark didn't bring magic in her Hollywood debut. She brought 11 points. That's not magic. That's not magic. And let's get to the news. Dave Roberts says that Shohei Otani is playing through that bruised hamstring. Uh, he doesn't want Otani to push things, though. And if you have been watching Otani run lately, you can tell he's kind of trotting around the base paths. Don't clown Otani for kind of gold bricking along. No, 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 no. It's just basically, why would you want to lose that guy for about a month? So, yeah, I'm all in favor of the jogging. On the plus side for the Dodgers, Alex Vesia has had a horrific, had a horrific 2023. He was once a dominant lefty in the Dodgers bullpen, sent to the minors repeatedly last year. This year, though, his ERA has dropped to 1.23. He ranks 11th in terms of ERA amongst all relievers in the NL. And the secret to his success is not working out. Vesia told the LA Times that his seven-day-a-week workout regimen bulked him up so much that he couldn't get loose when he threw. Quote, we call it bricked out. You can see it in my throw. When you're restricted and you're fighting through your mechanics, it's really hard to be a good pitcher, unquote. So let that be a lesson to the youth of America. 
stay on the couch, and please enjoy a nice healthy bag of tiny chocolate donuts. You would think with all the Heisman Trophy winners and with Lincoln Riley that USC would be would just straight up have the quarterback recruiting game down pat, but you would be wrong. UCLA has landed Warren High School quarterback Madden Iamaleva, a four-star prospect from Downey. It's first year head coach Deshaun Foster's highest rated addition since taking over the program in February. The player is ranked in the ESPN Top 100. It boosts the Bruins' 2025 recruiting class up to the mid-30s in the country. His older brother, Nico, projects to be Tennessee's starting quarterback. And as for me, I'm just looking forward to learning how to pronounce the dude's last name. The dude said UCLA was his favorite school as a kid. Now, I don't want to go overboard and claim he's the, the future for the Bruins. We got caught up with that when we were talking a lot about Dante Moore last year. Chase Garbers is obviously the starter in his last season in Westwood. UCLA will still have at least five other quarterback options to choose from. So don't get me wrong, it may very well be Iamaleva, but there's variety there to choose from. Yesterday, we went into great detail, uh, breaking down the Rams' defense, how it's evolved under Sean McVay's leadership. And I'm too hungover this morning to do that with the Chargers, frankly. We might do it soon. But we do have a hint as to what to expect from new coordinator Jesse Minter. Linebackers coach Navarro Bowman, a four-time All-Pro selection when he played with the uh, San Francisco 49ers, said he likes that the Chargers linebackers are crucial to the defensive scheme working. Quote, we do different things that we didn't do when I was playing. It's more fun, right? That just shows the evolution of the game. Jesse is a great defensive coordinator. His scheme is second to none, unquote. So I would reckon what that tells me is we're looking at a 3-4, and in a traditional 3-4, we talked about this a little bit yesterday in a traditional 3-4. The defensive linemen run a two-gap, which means they might shoot a gap between the guard and the tackle or the guard and the center. It's just going to depend. You're basically trying to clog up the offensive line and have the linebackers sprint from uh, sideline to sideline so that they can go make a play. We don't talk a lot about college baseball on this show, but last night we officially bid adieu to the Pac-12 conference. It's gone. Finit. No more. USC lost 4-3 to uh, Arizona last night in the conference's title game. The Conference of Champions, that was their last actual game. And to be honest with you, we've talked about it for two years. It's their own damn fault. I've read that the loss ends the, ends the Trojan season. I have no way of breaking down how college baseball picks its postseason format. Totally don't care. The last thing I want is to have something else uh, blown out of proportion in terms of hype the way that March Madness has been. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Talk to me about the current Dodger woes, or for that matter, uh, talk to me about the Chargers defense, or UCLA's future quarterback. And if you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow, hopefully with working equipment. Faithful Angelinos is a Cam Cortel Queso production. Take care.